All right. Awesome. How's everyone doing so far tonight, today? Good? Good? My name is Laura Lalonde. I'm an independent consultant focused on cross-platform mobile application development. I've been in the industry for 20 years, and in the last five years just got into mobile app development and absolutely love it. I'm a Xamarin MVP, a Microsoft MVP, and I'm part of a group called the Western Devs. We're a group of developers. We love to blog. We record podcasts. And we speak at events that are like this, conferences, user groups, street corner. Whoever will listen, that's where you'll find us talking. So this is a special time in our industry, right? We're all able to start creating applications and publishing them to a store that is accessible to millions of people around the world. And we didn't have that 10 years ago. This is, this is something that's uh, in recent years becoming a thing. And now we have developers that are becoming entrepreneurs and are really getting into uh, developing their own apps, putting them out for public consumption. And now you find that everybody wants to be a mobile app developer. Uh, my daughter, Taylor, she's 20 years old, she approached me, she had a business idea, the same business idea everyone else has. She thought it was fabulous. She even had her first quarter revenue projections available to me, so I, I really know that she planned this out really well. And so before you know, she got any further down the, the path of talking about developing this app and putting it out there and how she was gonna make a lot of money, I started asking the hard questions and some things that I think that she needed to think about and actually get in place before she got started. Because before you sit down to develop that first line of code, you really want to make sure that you understand that you're going to be putting an app out there that's going to be on everyone's personal device. And that has a lot of issues that, that come along with it and a lot of responsibility. So before you get started, think about how are you going to approach yourself or how are you going to market yourself to the world? You have to start thinking of yourself as a business now. You are a public entity. What's your business name? Are you going to be a sole proprietor or are you going to incorporate? Are you going to be uh, registered as an, a corporate entity? What type of equipment are, do you have in your house right now in your home office to be able to start developing and to support that development? Do you have devices on hand that you can test with? What type of licenses do you have? I know a lot of the frameworks out there are free. Xamarin now is free. Well, <laughs> part of like Visual Studio. I guess technically I'm not supposed to say it's free. It's, it's included in Visual Studio. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of things that are out there that are freely available to us, but there are still licenses, licenses you have to pay for if you want your app to look nice. Stock images, graphic design templates. And then there are accounting and legal fees that you have to think about especially if you start thinking about going into uh, a corporation type of model. And I really recommend choosing corporation over sole proprietorship for many reasons. If you're looking to get publicly funded, if you're going to angel investors or the banks or even applying for government grants, you're more likely to be taken seriously if you're registered as an entity. Registering as a, as a corporation also keeps your personal liability separate. Your personal assets are outside of the company business. So you reduce your potential for, for risk there. You also can leverage the tax credits that come with owning a business. So you're buying a development machine that can be written off, D devices to support the testing efforts that can be written off, part of your home office, your internet uh, bill, some of the hydro to power your home office. Those are all things that you can benefit from if you register as a corporation. There's also App Store accounts that you now have to purchase. Yes, you have to spend money. It's, you, know, you have to spend money to make money. It's nothing in life is free, my mom used to say to me. And so each of the, the App Stores, they have a cost. You know, obviously, Apple's the highest. Um, but that's a required cost of running your business. And then you have to register your name as that publisher account. That's going to be the public name that people are going to recognize when they start downloading your app. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to invest in a set of devices. Everyone says, well, we have a simulator. We'll just test on the simulator. It'll be fine. It's awesome. No. You need to test on a device, and it's preferably a low-end device, because a low-end device is not going to perform the way that the simulator is on your computer. The simulator is making use of the processors on your computer. 
You want to see, in the worst case scenario, how your app is going to perform out in the wild. And you want to mitigate against bad user reviews. If your app is slow and starts crashing, and you start getting one-star reviews, you've just ruined your reputation. And it's really hard to come back from that when your app has such negative reviews in the store. People hesitate to download it, um, and people just tend to avoid it. You want to make sure that you invest in some low-end devices, test your app. If it it's, if it's requires location-based services, if that's what it's dependent on, take it out there. Go around the neighborhood. Go into different areas where you think that maybe coverage might drop. See how it performs. You also want to make sure that when you're coding on your home machine, it's your business machine now, that you also think about what version control you're going to use. Because now this is a code base that is your business. And you have to and I'm going to keep saying that because you have to keep thinking of it yourself in terms of a business. And this so source code base is going to be a full audit of the work that you've been doing and a full history of the changes that your app is going to undergo. Because it will undergo changes. You, you will develop it, you will put it out there, and you will be putting out releases uh, in the future. So as developers, we always think ter in terms of logic. And the UI usually is secondary. But in app development, when people are downloading your application from the store, they don't have you standing next to them telling, you, telling them how to use your app. So they need to be able to navigate your app and, it, and understand its purpose, its function. It has to be intuitive, it has to be clean, and it has to be fast. If users do not understand how to use your application, they're going to uninstall it they're going to give up. And you don't want that. So really invest in some good UI design. If you don't have a knack for it, I know I don't, partner with a graphic designer. Buy some graphic templates, invest in some stock images. Those are small investments to make to make sure that you have an application that is successful when you put it out there. Because that first impression is going to be everything. So. My daughter, you know, she's a little impatient. She's like, well, this sounds, sounds like a lot of work. I don't know if uh, I want to do this. But with a lot of this groundwork, once you have it laid and that foundation is there for your business, after that, you just can continue on day, day by day. It becomes part of your day-to-day your -day work. And, you know, registering that business, that's a one-time thing. Um, investing in all those tools you know, getting your source co code set up in place. All of that, that's just a one-time setup uh, that once it's, it's there, you're good. So you have to start building that groundwork. So before you start developing your application, it's really important to think things through. And so you approach it as a business and you start planning. Define your mobile roadmap. What is your app really going to do? You know, who is it going to target? What are, the, who, what are the languages you're going to support? What markets are you going to put it out into? Those, into? Think about that up front so that you have an app that has a clear purpose and that doesn't just become this big, hot mess when you publish it out to the App Store, hoping that, you know, that it just takes off by, by virtue. Now, everyone's making an app because they want to make an impact, but they also you know, want to make a little cash, right? Everybody wants to make some money. So what are you going to do? How are you going to make that money from your app? How are you going to ensure return on your investment? Because your investment was the cost to start your business, but also your time. The time that you are developing this app, that's, that's a cost. So is your app going to be a paid app? Is it going to be a freemium app that you know, you're just going to unlock features that are you know, these advanced features that users can have, but then they also can use your app for free? Are you going to have in-app purchases? So is it going to be a, a virtual game with some currency that they can buy, you know, like Kino or things like that? It's kind of interesting. Or are you going to settle on in-app advertising? Newsflash, in-app advertising doesn't really yield a big return. So think that through, and what is your, really, which, what is your end goal for this app? Is it just to create a portfolio for yourself, make a name for yourself? Or are you serious about making money and having it um, be a revenue source in the future? So you have to investigate those uh, monetization options and then pick the one that you think is going to work best for you. Now, once your app is out in the wild, you also want to know who's downloading it, 
how are they using it, are, is the app crashing, you want to be alerted to those kinds of things. So you want to throw in some analytics into your application. And definitely do that before you put, publish it for the first time. Because those analytics are going to give you a window into how your app is being used. And it's going to enable you to start really analyzing things that you can do in your application to entice users to do things, like purchase the advanced features, you know, pay for a subscription, click on this button. That you, there are services like Azure Machine Learning, which you can leverage now, which will help you kind of determine you know, what's the best time to make, this, make a sale on, in this app based on the user actions. So analytics are really important to include in your application. But oftentimes, it's overlooked or not really thought of or thought of as, as, as not a necessity. And I think it's a very big necessity. This is a big one. If you are collecting personal information about a user in any way, or if you're using third-party services like analytics, which I've recommended, or any other third-party service and you're not sure what's going on behind the scenes, although I really recommend you should know what's going on behind the scenes, and you're going to put this app into a public app store, definitely include a privacy policy. Because there are laws now that govern the usage of personal data on, on a device and how you're making use of that data. Are you taking de a device ID and putting it up into your cloud-based uh, data, data store? User information, first name, last name, email. These are all things that now you, are, you have a liability um, that you're exposing yourself to because you're collecting this information. So you have a responsibility to the user to let them know how you're using that information and, that, and to guarantee them that you're going to protect their information, that you're not selling it to some black market lists you know, for profit. Now, to, to add a, a privacy policy in your application, there's online privacy policy generators for very basic applications. But there are privacy consulting firms or even lawyers that you can talk to if you're really serious about covering all your ends and making sure that you're, you're doing the right thing by your user. OK. So, We've covered the hard stuff, and we had the, like, the hard talk, the heart-to-heart -heart about you know, what you need to do. And my daughter, she's like, you know, I just want to get started now. Can I just get started on my app? That's how she talks. Can I just get started? Yes, you can get started. So we sit together, we code. It's great, you know, mother-daughter bonding experience. I'm helping her develop this app. It's like a springboard app that just you press a button. Teresa Caputo talks. It's very innovative. She's for sure she's going to make a lot of money on this. And now she's like so ready to publish it to the store because we've spent a lot of hours developing this app. And I'm like, no, no, honey. Before you release the app store, we, gotta, we have a couple more things to cover off. Oh, boy. This is feeling very discouraging at this point. It's like, no, there's more. But there is. Before you put that app out into the app store, you want to make sure that there are live users that are willing to test your app. Have it go through a beta testing process. That is really important. Because now you have real people who are downloading your app from a, a, a beta store, like hockeyapp.net. That's a really good one. Hockey app's a popular one. And they're testing your app as though they had downloaded it from the public store. So they don't have your guidance on how to use it. And you just get to sit back and wait for that feedback to come in. Let them play around with it. Have them report to you. Is, is it really a usable app? Do they really understand how, what to do, where to go with it? Or are they complaining about you know, you, you, the user experience, performance issues, anything like that? This is the best time to correct those things before they actually get to the public market. Because you have, beta testers are very forgiving. They know that when they're, they're participating in a beta process, they understand the app is not going to be perfect. And they're not going to rate it in the store. There's no, it's not available in the store yet to be rated. So this is the time you have to really polish your app, get it just right before you put it out there. And then once you are ready to put it out there, now you have to put on your marketer hat, OK? Because you have to be the one to tell people about your app. That's how they're going to know about it. How are you going to get the word out there? So obviously, you have to start blogging, reaching out to other technical blogs, use social media. This book, Pitch Perfect, is a really good book that talks about marketing your app. 
when you're ready to put it out there. And I, I read through it in a matter of two nights. I absolutely loved it. I couldn't put the book down. Uh, so it's definitely worth a read. But at this point, you now go from business owner, developer, to now marketer. Right? How are you going to then receive that user feedback? You have it, your app out there. It's in the store. You've marketed it. People are downloading it. Now how are they going to start responding to you? How are they going to interact with you if they have problems with the application? Because the last thing you want is for them to just put a one-star rating if, because they have no other way to connect with you. So set up an online portal and user voice. Um, that'd be a great way to solicit some feedback. So if users are having trouble, they can leave that feedback. You can respond. You can push out updates. And then you can maintain a good reputation in the App Store. Also, social media, again, is a good factor here, or even include a support email address. Uh, but more and more, people are very comfortable with user voice. It's one of the really popular online uh, feedback for, uh, boards, so I definitely recommend setting something like that up. And now that you have that feedback and your app isn't perfect, it never is, it needs tweaking, it needs polishing, maybe there's a feature that's really popular that everyone upvoted on user voice and it's like, oh man, everyone wants this feature really badly, so maybe I can make this a paid feature, so I'm going to include this. So now you've got to start thinking about scheduling these maintenance releases, bug fixing, features, that constant churn of always pushing out updates. Because the biggest advantage you're going to have with that is that users are going to see that your app is not just an abandoned app in the store. It's un if it's undergoing constant updates, they're going to trust you as the publisher to keep maintaining it to their level of quality and standard, that you're going to keep adding new features. It's going to keep them interested. And users that have that app on their device are going to be reminded that your app is on their device. So if they downloaded it, used it a few times, forgot about it because then they got busy with Pokemon Go, well, tomorrow you can release an update, they get a notification, and they're like, oh, I have this amazing app on my phone I forgot about because I was too busy chasing Pokemon in the street. So then they can just go back, revisit your app. How many times do you see those updates on your phone and you're even amazed about the fact that there's these apps on your phone that you forgot all about? I mean, everyone's had that happen, right? You saw a notification from random app. Oh, I didn't know I had that on my phone or I forgot about that I had that. And then you go back into it and you start using excuse me, you start using it again. So that's the benefit of scheduling those maintenance releases. Even if you have nothing to fix, say your app is perfect, doesn't need anything. Make make it add something new to it. Do something just to push out an, a maintenance release every so often so users are reminded that it's there and so that they can see that you are working on it. You know. Constantly improve your app, even if no one's asking you to, just to show that you have that commitment to it. All right. So after that heart-to-heart -heart with my daughter, she was like, yeah, I'm ready to get started. She understood the business implications, and she's feeling really good about it now. And I hope you all are too. So thank you very much. Feel free to connect with me on the floor during the conference or online. I'm easily reachable. So thanks, guys. Thanks.